Hey guys, welcome back to Matt Keeps Fish. Today I'm going to teach you how to care for my favorite fish, the twig catfish, so keep watching. So first, what am I talking about when I say twig catfish? I'm kind of generalizing a bunch of different catfish together. I'm talking about uh, Farlowella Vitata, a cuse. I'm talking about the Royal Farlowella. I'm talking about uh, the Whiptail Catfish. I'm talking about Lizard Catfish. If you guys want to see what those are, go look them up. In this video, I'm kind of generalizing them, working from my experience with Farlowella uh, Vitata, which I believe that I have. If you have experience with some of these other catfish and something I say just doesn't seem right, feel free to leave it in the comments. I'd love to learn more about them. So the question that we ask in this video is, should you get one based on this care guide? Are you able to do it? In our first section is obviously, Appearance, what do they look like? What's their character? Kind of like, would you want one based on kind of looking at it? For those of you who like unique fish, I have good news for you. This is a really, really unique fish. Like I've mentioned, it looks like a twig. Of the varieties that I have, the Farlowella Vitata seem to vary by color. So some will get a very kind of golden brown. Some of them will get a very dark brown, but they seem to have different uh, horizontal stripes going down their bodies for all different Vitata morphs. Starting at the head of these animals, you're gonna see that they've got a very long rostrum, I believe that's called, very very big nose, um, and that's just kind of adding to the twig design. Everything about this fish is adding to this, this twig design to keep it camouflaged and away from predators. Moving on back from this rostrum, uh, you're gonna see that it's got these little eyes, which are also colored brown to help it camouflage. And just like a lot of other catfish, just like Corydoras, stuff like that, they're able to kind of blink these eyes, not by putting an eyelid over them, but by kind of rolling the eyes down into the body to get any debris off. You will notice, if you look very closely, that there's two nostrils above these eyes, and they're, they're almost clear, but it is cool to see. Below the eyes, of course, like all of these fish in this, in this category that I put them all into, they've got this sucker mouth, and that's going to help them in high flow areas where they come from, and it's really good at scraping off diatomic algae. Moving on back, we'll look at the fins now. Uh, it has a dorsal fin, an anal fin, pectoral fins, and a tail fin. It doesn't seem to have ventral fins. As this is a fish that doesn't seem to have a swim bladder, nor does it really swim all that often, these pectoral fins are more used for balance when it's kind of hopping its way along the ground, moving itself backwards and forwards uh, while it's latching onto things with its sucker mouth. What gets really interesting about this fish is its dorsal and anal fins, which, unlike most fish, are the ones that actually propel it through the water. With other fish, you'll see the tail or caudal fin as being the main powerhouse, but with these guys, it's completely different. For this fish, it's almost like it's got a second tail fin uh, closer into the body, and they work independently and together to steer the fish through its, uh, through its environment. And uh, what's interesting is it doesn't really have control because like I said, it doesn't really have a swim bladder. Pectoral fins aren't really doing much. So it kind of it shoots up like a missile and then it just kind of drifts onto its, ne its next landing spot. As I've mentioned already, the tail fin on this fish isn't really good for anything. The only thing that it's really good for is for showing how old this fish is. As, as it grows up, you'll notice that uh, like on many other types of fish, there's some, there's some finnage that continues to grow off on the tip of the tail fin, and um, this of course adds to the, the stick-like uh, nature of this fish to help it blend in even more. And for all the fins that we've talked about, for the most part, they've kind of got this rotting leaf look to them, so it helps the fish blend in even more. It's the connection between tail and body that makes this fish something that's very delicate. You want to make sure that you take great care when you're handling this fish, when you're moving it from uh, body of water to body of water, when you're bringing it in from the store, you really gotta be careful that you don't snap that tail because the, the body of this fish can be a little bit brittle. It's, it's flexible, but it's also a complete body of armor. There's, there's a thick exoskeleton on this fish. I do actually have a case um, where I had another Farlowella. It was bigger than the one I have now, Kitster. Uh, if you guys have been on the channel for a while, you know that I, this is like the one guy that I've named. Uh, but bef after that, I got a bigger one and this bigger one died for unknown reasons. Um, and what I did is I put it in my snail tank after it died and came back a week later and I saw that the exoskeleton was still there. The snails had ba barely touched it because of how complete this exoskeleton was on the fish. So it can take a beating, 
but don't push it. The size of this fish when it reaches full maturity uh, is about six inches, I wanna say. Mine's five inches right now, so I can confirm that it'll, it'll get up to that size. But of course, it'll only get up to near that size if you keep it healthy. For this fish to reach its maximum lifespan, which has been recorded at 15 years apparently, you wanna make sure that has a good diet. All of my Farloellas first started out very, very skinny. Even though they're twig catfish, they're not supposed to be like that. You wanna make sure that they have a nice rounded belly underneath that exoskeleton. To do that, I would recommend starting them off on cucumber, but we'll get into that as we go through the care guide. Okay, so next section, tank mates. What can you put this thing with? And by extension, what is its behavior with other animals in the tank? On one hand, you're in luck. You can put pretty much anything with this fish and it's not gonna harm them. It's not agile enough to cause damage like a, a Chinese uh, algae eater might be. I would even take it to the next level and say that you could keep this fish with shrimp if you had enough, a big enough shrimp tank. So on that note, this fish is safe to put with anything. Here's the problem though. You can't put just anything with this fish. Obviously there are fish with mouths big enough to destroy it. There are fish that are nippy that you wouldn't want to put with it because it's got nice long fins and you want to make sure that those develop. This fish being slow also means that you don't want to put it with anything that's going to outcompete it for food. I'm actually not joking when I say that I've had problems with this fish being outcompeted by snails. And I think that's where the problem really comes in. People get this fish and it cleans up their algae a little bit, but then they don't feed it and it just starves out within a few months. We'll get to feeding in a second though. Just know that this fish is completely peaceful. It's gonna get beat up by pretty much any fish. So you wanna make sure that the tank is designed around this fish, not just another random addition in there. It's gonna get out competed. It's gonna get messed up. In the tank that I have it in right now, it's already struggling. You might be able to see that it's getting skinny and that is mostly due to it being out competed for food. Uh, as you can see behind me, I've got the 75 gallon aquarium. This is its new habitat. That is how dedicated I am to this fish. It's not just for it but it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna have the Farloella in mind because they, they are a very difficult fish to take care of. So now on the note of feeding, what do you feed this thing? Like I've just said, vegetables work really well, cucumber, zucchini, uh, beans, stuff like that. Um, eventually start introducing algae wafers, um, plecobites, mine loves plecobites. It, it's literally forgotten about cucumbers now. All it eats are plecobites. At least I think that's what they're called. Th there'll be a picture right here. Of course, in a pinch, this thing is going to eat algae to stay alive. So if you have algae that you're having trouble with, it's it's an okay idea to let this thing handle it. Just know that it's probably, it's def actually, it's definitely not going to be able to get your green spot algae, uh, not your hair algae, not hard algae like that. It's just going to get rid of your, your soft diatom algae that you're going to be able to get off with your fingers anyway. So next section, environment. How do you keep this thing in a glass box and how big doth the glass box need to be? Probably not 75 gallons. That's a bit of, <laughs> that's a bit overkill. Now I am keeping two in there, but it's still overkill. Honestly, for one, I would say 20 gallons and then like add on another uh, 10 gallons for every fully grown Farloella. Just no mindset five. I've heard they can go to eight depending on the subspeed. It's complicated. Just give it 20 gallon at least. Make sure it's not getting out competed in that 20 gallon. Don't stuff it with fish. Make sure it's got a fighting chance. But uh, other than that, other than the 20 gallon minimum tank size, 20 gallon long if you don't mind, um, you're gonna wanna make sure there's plants in there. Now I have difficulty with plants. There's probably not gonna be a lot of plants in, in uh, that tank but it's never a bad idea to have plants. There's a lot of surface area on plants for them to chew on. You know, there's a lot of little cultures of organisms that grow on there. They love to be able to hide in there. It helps with their camouflage. And on the topic of sort of plant matter in there, driftwood is, I would say like necessary. Like I think you actually need driftwood. I believe like a lot of other sucker type fish, these guys uh, need the fiber from wood to actually be able to digest their food. If they don't have enough fiber, they balloon up, they get congested and they will die. One thing I will add though, is if you have looked at this fish for any amount of time, you notice one thing and that is it's super clumsy. Like it swims sometimes as a missile to get out of the way, but for the most part, it just wants to be able to hop along and that's gonna be made really easy when there's a lot of open space for it. I would say river stones are great for that, nice pile of that, uh, especially if there's a lot of algae growing on them. Driftwood is great for that but careful with a lot of plants. So you can see in that 40 gallon, a lot of jungle val on there and the Farloella hates it so bad. It's at the age where it can't really climb onto them anymore. It just falls off, it gets tangled in them. 
So make sure that it's got those open spaces. Now, other stuff that I haven't really touched on, um, breeding. I've never bred these guys before. The survival rate of fry is pretty dang low. Um, however, they are protect protective parents, so just like uh, Ancestris, these guys will cover their eggs with their own bodies. Um, they're pretty good parents. Not sure how breeding works um, between them. I don't know if there's any sort of courting ritual or anything like that. I would still say like yeah, this is a very fragile species unless you're going into breeding them and you're gonna do everything you can for that. Unless you're gonna do that, just, just keep one maybe, especially if you're not willing to build a whole 75 gallon aquarium for them. <laughs> so with all that said, this is a pretty fragile species. It's, I love it but I love it because I've designed things around it. This has been my guy. I know I'm hoping I'm gonna have him for the full 15 years. So the question comes up, should you keep a Farlowella Vitata or any kind of twig catfish for that matter? I would say unless you're gonna invest a lot of time into this specific fish, don't bother. Get some other algae eating fish if you're looking at it for that. Don't bother, it's gonna die on you. It's like Autosynclus. If you love Autosynclus like I did a few months back, get them for that. Don't get them for algae scrubbing. It's the same with this guy, but like 10 times more so. He's gonna be much more difficult to keep alive. So if you want this guy, make sure it's for him and not for his algae eating abilities or anything like that. So if you guys enjoyed this care guide on my favorite fish, make sure you let me know, leave me a like. Uh, if you wanna know more about it, I've got a lot more information to share probably that I forgot to say in this video. Leave me a comment, I'll respond to it. And if you wanna see more videos like this, more care guides, more tank updates, if you wanna see what happens with that, subscribe and I'll make sure that you do. And uh, I'll see you guys next Sunday.